So in this demo, we're going to work with uh, creating effective cartographic layouts um, and composing a map that you might want to drop into uh, a publication or a research paper or a PowerPoint presentation. So there are there's no official data really for this demo. Um, I've given you some example files in here that you may want to play around with a little bit. Um, and I'm just going to use these for uh, creating the, 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 the map documents in here. So this is what's actually in that Demo 9 folder. Um, it's just a few different shape files that um, are from some of the later demos um, but are useful in kind of different ways of visualizing um, point line, polygon, and raster data uh, in, in an effective, effective composition. So once you've started up ArcMap, just go ahead and start up a blank map as usual. Um, you can add in those data. Uh, you can add in really anything that you might want to. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and bring in uh, the Landsat image um, and the soils for now. Actually, I'll go ahead and bring in everything and then we can just turn them off as we need to. So a lot of this is um, stuff we haven't dealt with. Uh, if you're following along sequentially, um, it's in some of the, the more advanced sections um, where we might deal with 3D rendering is where the castles are from. Um, the Landsat is an early um, satellite imagery one. The DEM is from topography and the drainage paths are from hydrological modeling. But let's go ahead and just turn off everything but the soils for the moment. Um, so to date, we've been working entirely in what's called the data view of ArcGIS. Um, there's also a layout view. Um, and this is sort of like a dumbed down, simplified version of something like Illustrator that lets you do page layouts um, or create that map in a little bit more official of a way. So it's sort of hidden down here where we have the data view and the layout view buttons. So you can click on it there and you'll, you'll notice that it brings up what looks like a page preview. You can also get to it in view, layout view as well. So we have a new series of navigation tools, zooming in, zooming out, panning, um, and these are now the def default for zooming in and out on the page versus zooming in and out on the data. So as I zoom in, in contrast to when I do it on the map, the width of these polygons stays um, the same. It doesn't, it doesn't, it actually gets bigger. Um, it doesn't, I'm not really zooming in on the data so much as I'm zooming in on, on the preview of this page as I would print it out. So I can begin to, um, resize my map document on the page. Um, I can use my original tools, they're just not the default anymore. If I wanted to say zoom in in a little bit more detail here. Uh, if you want to resize things, it's always good to use the select elements. And just simply zooming around, um, I can always zoom to my layer. So I'm going to go ahead and just go in to my symbology tab and I'm going to color these things by soil code. So I've now gotten something that looks a little bit more like a regular map, um, looks like a soil map. But there's a few things that I need on this map to make it an official thing that I might want to export. Um, the first of these is a scale bar. Now this is not a complicated thing to find. You simply, when in the layout view, you go to insert scale bar and this will bring up um, a whole slew of different scale bars that you can choose. Um, I tend to use this one a lot, but you're welcome to experiment around with any of the different ones that are in here. Uh, if you choose properties, you get um, a few different other things you can set. Most important here are the number of divisions and subdivisions, um, whether or not it shows one before zero, uh, what happens when you resize it, does it affect the division value or does it affect the number of divisions. Um, the units as well, uh, I encourage you to work in kilometers um, versus miles. I don't know why that's the default on a lot of these, but it is. Um, and then you can also do things like set uh, some colors and how many, how often things are labeled. I find it easiest to go ahead and just hit OK with the default go in. Um, and once you've put it on there, it's a lot easier to go look at it, zoom in, and say like, oh, that looks kind of silly to have all these extra subdivisions in here. Um, and it might be nice if this was just one kilometer. So I'm going to go in and just, just make that the way it is. So I'm going to take out some of those subdivisions. Um, I'm going to adjust the number of divisions. So I'm going to lose my number of divisions and I want the division value to be one kilometer. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. 
see what that looks like. Okay, I might want to go over to my labels here. Well, I don't really care about the first midpoint being labeled, so I just want to do my divisions. And that'll take that out. So now when I resize it, it just cuts down the number of them. It's a little bit more effective of a way of, of putting that scale bar in there. Now I can also do um, my north arrow. This is something that's pretty important to have. So I can just go simply to insert north arrow. There's not a lot of things that have to be set here, but I encourage you to choose whichever one in here you might want. Um, there are a lot of very, very fanciful ones. I'm going to do kind of a classic. Uh, and I can sort of resize it as I will. Now I can also insert my legend. Um, this is this is very important with with uh, with any sort of vector data like this where I don't intrinsically know what those colors mean. So I, I can do that by insert legend. Now first it's going to ask me what map layers I want to have in the legend. In this case I don't need anything other than the soils. Um, it's only it's defaulting to whatever is visible. Um, it's going to ask me how many columns I want in my legend. I have a feeling that I'm probably going to need more than one column. So I'm going to go ahead and set three or four columns here. Uh, you can give it a title. Um, I don't find the titles to be particularly useful, so I usually just simply turn it off. If you wanted to set the border um, to give it you know, a nice border around it, maybe give it a slightly different background color. Um, and if you wanted any sort of shadow on it, you could set these in here. And simply go OK through the rest of this. And now we've got a nice the large um, legend that we can begin to, to fit onto our map. Now in this case, um, there's a couple things I might want to do in here as well. Uh, first off, it's a little repetitive to have Soils Notre Dame and Soil Code. Um, if I want to change what these are called, I can just simply do it here. So I want to take out that internal underscore. Now it just simply says Soil Code. Um, I can go back into my layer properties and turn off all, uh, all other values because they're not important. And if I really want to, I can go into here, double click on it, go over to items, um, go onto the items here, choose properties, um, and I can turn it on general so that I don't see the layer name anymore. That'll take out that soils Notre Dame, so it just says soil code and displays it as, as I might like there. So there's lots of other properties that you can set, um, and I encourage you to sort of play around with those as, as you will. Um, I can also put in a title um, if I want to, uh, just by insert title. Um, I'm going to call this Notre Dame Soil Map. Now there's a glitch in ArcGIS that's been around for uh, a pretty long time. I'm just moving some toolbars around so I can see this for a pretty long time. Um, if I wanted to go try to edit this afterwards, it's going to come in like this. Um, all I have to do is just retype it, and now I can set it much more eff effectively. So if I wanted to set my type or anything like that, um, I can actually turn on my drawing toolbar. If I right-click up here and choose Draw, um, now I can begin. This I like to dock this at the bottom for some reason. Um, now I can begin to set my font sizes, how big it is. Um, I can do all sorts of other drawing on there if I want to. So that's some of the basics of how you might render um, a vector map like this. Um, we can also do a lot of arranging in here. So if I wanted to make very, very sure that this, this sort of uh, was centered off of the map, I can simply select both of them, right click, and then I have the ability to align or distribute. Um, in this case, I had already done a pretty good job of it, but let's say I wanted to do all three of them. Sorry, I had, did not have my button held down. That's so all three of them selected. Um, I could do my align to center. You see it moved up there a little bit. Um, I can also do things like inserting grid marks. Um, so showing us where we are in the world, um, especially for something like this where it might not be immediately clear. And I do that in my layers up here. So if I go into the double click on layers um, as opposed to the individual layers, I can go over to grids, choose new grid, and then it's going to ask me whether I want to do a graticle, um, so 
degrees, minutes, seconds, or whether I want to do a measured grid where it divides it up into um, a QTM or a reference uh, as well. You can do multiple ones. Um, usually it's relatively common to have a graticle and a measured grid on there, so a projected system and a geographic system. Um, I'm just going to do a graticle for the moment, so just go ahead and hit OK or Next. Um, and this is the case, even if our map is in UTM, we can still create this graticle on there. It's smart enough to do it on the fly. So it's going to ask me whether I want to do uh, around the outside and labels, and then it's going to say place parallels every how often, so one degree, one minute, um, or say 30 seconds. This is, we're zoomed in really far, so I'm going to choose 30 seconds here, and we'll see how it looks. It's going to ask me a little bit about so the division types I want to use. I'm just going to leave the defaults for the moment. And go ahead and hit Finish, and then OK. So maybe, maybe every 30 seconds was a little bit too frequent in here. Um, but if you zoom in on it, you can begin to see that it's it's labeled them. Um, it has the the crosses on there, um, and it's it's labeled every other one. So let's go ahead and just go back in. Uh, rather than doing it all over again, I can just choose properties with it selected, uh, and I'm going to go to intervals, and I'm going to change this to every. Let's do every two minutes, as opposed to every thirty seconds. So I just hit a bunch of OKs. And that's a little bit more of what you might want to have on there. Now you're welcome to set up the other section as well. Um, if you wanted to set up a, a projected one, um, it's quite quite easy to do. Now if you wanted to add um, a table or anything, you can do that fairly easily. Um, if you have an actual, if we wanted to add the soil table for some reason, um, we could go through and choose um, add table to layout. It's now going to appear over here, um, and we can sort of modify it as we wanted to. Uh, additionally, I'm just going to delete that because it's not super useful at the moment. Um, but if you had, say, an attribute table that had, say, the total area for each one, you could add that on there as well. Um, we can also add in any graphs that we might create. So um, if I had created um, like we did with topography before, so I'm just going to turn the DEM on. Um, now if you haven't seen this before, just, just bear with me that I'm creating, um, I'm just turning on my 3D Analyst toolbar, which also means I have to turn on my 3D Analyst tools. Um, and I'm just going to create uh, an interpolated line and then use that to create a profile graph. I could very easily just right click on the title up here and add to layout as well. So now I would have my chart on there and I could put it sort of wherever I wanted. So if I didn't need a legend in there um, I could have sort of a profile graph. And I could even do it I could change that interpolated line to be something a little bit bigger. So if I wanted to make that um, that line be a nice bright red, um, and that line to be just a little bit thicker, I can just double click on it. And it's now showing me where that profile graph is. I might want to change my title as well to be Notre Dame topography or something like that. So that's a little bit about how you create some of these things. Um, just closing down my, my extra windows here. Um, but I do want to show you just how to export it so that you would have this in a sort of a permanent way as well. The easiest thing to do is to, to go up into File um, and choose Export Map. That's going to give you a few different options. Um, you have lots of different types you can save it as. Um, JPEGs, TIFFs, PNGs, these are all good for um, sort of any anything you might want to drop it into a presentation or something like that. Um, you can clip it to just the extent that you have so you don't get the full page. Uh, you can export it as an, as an Illustrator file or um, 
uh, an SVG. These are vector-based forms that you can begin to edit them a little bit more actively in something like Illustrator um, or another sort of vector graphics program. So there's lots of different ways to export your files um, in a way that be then becomes useful for your publications or for your presentations. Uh, I have a little bit more on when you might want to use some of these different types um, and what, what particular specifics of, say, different formats you might want might to export in for, for different audiences um, in the demo notes. Uh, so again, as always, please feel free to, to email me with any questions or to, to contact us however, however it's listed in, in your version of the course. Thanks a lot and have a good day.